Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We will begin with our prayer to be followed by the national anthem. May we request everyone to put yourselves in the presence of our Lord. God Almighty, thank you for bringing us together to celebrate Subono culture and heritage through the sharing of our stories. We need this in this time of uncertainty, O oh God, to remind us of our identity as a people, unique, blessed, and proud. This reminder must inspire us that whatever challenges we face, whether unseen, alien, and treacherous, can always be overcome when we are united in working for the present and the future and the heritage of our children and community. We pray for our present-day heroes who are fighting against the virus and other threats that besiege us today, our own people struggling to overcome these threats, and those who have died, fallen but never forgotten. Dearest God, heal our land. Amen. Maayong hapon mga Sugbuanon. Welcome to the third Gabi sa Kabilin 2020 online activities. This is an engaging space to appreciate and experience Cebu's culture and heritage. To formally start our webinar this afternoon, let us welcome one of our GSK partners, a curator from Museo Subu, Ms. Maria Cecilia Cabanes. Okay, maayong hapon kanatong tanan. Una sa tanan, we would like to thank everyone for uh, tuning in our Gabi Isa Kabilin session for this afternoon. Ang Gabi Isa Kabilin has been a part of every heritage enthusiast for the last 13 years. This is actually an event spearheaded by the Ramon Aboyti Foundation Incorporated, which actually started in 2007. And this aims to promote local Cebuano culture and heritage by encouraging Cebuanos to visit local museums and heritage sites. Personally, I'm so very fortunate to uh, work and experience the GSK that I strongly recommend and encourage everyone to join uh, in this event. The GSK is supposed to happen every May where we celebrate the Heritage Month and the International Museums Day. Unfortunately, the direction of the GSK has recently changed due to the pandemic, and now that it's supposed to be on its 14th run. Museums have to close and we are no longer allowed to gather. But for us, no COVID can stop GSK as we go digital and continue to celebrate local culture and heritage online. We continue to involve our partner museums and sites to host online activities, which we actually started uh, last June until this December, the activities are growing and we now have two activities set every month because we cannot leave a gap in the story of the themes that we have created to drum beat the big celebration in 2021, which is the arrival of Magellan to the Philippines. We still continue to follow the themes uh, that we have set, that we have prepared. Uh, last year, we had Magellan setting sail and this year, we now move on to the theme, the journey. Before I move on to introducing our speaker for this afternoon and what he's going to talk about, uh, may I just like, may we just like to remind you that there's a question and answer towards the end. You just have to type in your questions and we will try to accommodate as, as much questions as we can after, uh, after the presentation. 
Uh, and also, please watch out for our two sets of trivia and win prizes. We have a trivia within the program and another one which will be posted in the GSK FB page after this. Now, for this afternoon, we have an interesting topic because last year in Museo Sugbu, we featured a traditional tattoo session during one of our Gabi Isa Kabiling activities because we wanted to emphasize this as a part of our pre-colonial traditions, as a uh, part of our pre-colonial life. We also conducted a lecture entitled Pintados, which actually explains the various tattoo patterns in the Visayas and in Mindanao. Because of the many museums that participate in the GSK every year, we understand that many might not have been able to come to our activities. In fact, uh, a lot of people were expressing for a repeat of our lecture uh, many year, uh, a few uh, years ago, uh, but we were not able to do it. So this time we would like to take the opportunity to feature it once again, now that we can reach as many audience online. The speaker this afternoon is from Bukidnon, Mindanao, and he has a lineage from the Higaonon tribe, which he will explain later. He is doing an independent scholarship for the last 11 years in researching ancestral tattoos in the Philippines, particularly the people in, uh, of Mindanao. He has been practicing placing ancestral skin markings for the last two years. So without further ado, everyone, uh, we know that you've been waiting for this. Let's all welcome our speaker this afternoon, Piper Abbas, and listen to his presentation, Visayan Tattooing and Visayan Designs. We do hope you enjoy our lecture this afternoon. Daghan kaayong salamat. Uh, daghan salamat, um, Ms. Masi, and thank you for uh, having me here. Uh, sa gabi sa kabilin, kung siya sogbo. Um, anyway, next slide, please. So we have a lot of slides, but we will not dwell too long on most of them. There will be just uh, visual aids to put this deep and ancient culture and tradition in context. So next slide. So uh, I was born in Bukidnon, the Mindanao, and uh, Bukidnon is home of various Lumad groups. No, um, indigenous and Lumad groups was a part of my upbringing, so I was surrounded with that environment. Uh, mga Binukin speaking, the Batik Salog, and very diverse subgroups. Next slide, please. So my uh, approach and research is based on this upbringing and this man, Akong Lolo, who was my bridge to this ancient culture. Uh, uh, Siya connect sa ako as a culture sa, uh, among forefathers, and without him to tell me, I would not be able to understand where I come from. So um, this is the outlook that I uh, did uh, in research in terms of tattooing. Next slide. And uh, this guy, Lane Wilkin, he is an author of Filipino Tattoos, Ancient to Modern, and several other books. Uh, this book is published by Schiffer. Dilit uh, available in the Philippines. But Lane Wilkin, um, has done 30 years pin na research sa tattooing. Kung si Lane, ang iha pong inahan ani kay Pinay, Ilocana na yung iha inahan ani. So, uh, muna siya ang naka-research o grabe ka comprehensive um, look, uh, studies sa tattooing, sa Filipino tattooing. Next na slide, please. So, in terms of uh, Filipino tattooing, tanaw na to ang tradition along with the history of the Philippines. This long uh, tattoo culture sa tua. So to further understand tattooing, let's look into the dynamics of Filipino tattoo tradition. Slide. So when you talk about Filipino tattoos, the first thing that comes in our mind is si Apo Fangud. So she has been the icon of Filipino traditional tattooing. Next slide. But long before the world knew of Apo Ang Od, the world knew of the Visayan Pentados. Now, this is the very first illustration of who those Pentados were. They were, as sila mo yung put into perspective, um, and this was a long time ago, during the 15, uh, late 1500s. Next slide. So, 
in order to understand, during this time in ancient society, lahi ang ilang pag-perceive. Imagine going back into time, having tattoos all over ang atong surrounding. Ang perspective in the old Visayan was different to how we perceive tattooing now. Uh, karon medyo lahi naman ang perspective when you, when you talk about tattoos. No? Not as sa unang panahon. Lahi gid siya. Next slide, please. So, um, if we move to, if we go to the north, tanaw na to ang uh, Luzon culture, naagi hapon ang tattooing. Sa mga igorot groups, tattooing is a part of daily lives nila sa ilang society. And this photo is from the early 1900s. It's not that um, long ago. So this practice, unlike Visayas, na nag, nag vanish siya, na sustain siya dari sa Luzon. So, next slide, please. And if we go south, sa Mindanao, tattooing is also practiced. Tanawin mo ni nga picture from John Garvan uh, na ay manubo nga babae with tattoos on her chest. Sakit kay siya tanawin, no? So, it must have been really important for her to endure this tattooing. So, next slide. So, when we say tattooing in terms of tong culture, it exists dito sa north as well as the south. So, next slide. Ang painted Visayan really reflects ang pintados sa painted Filipinos. And next slide. So, let's look at this uh, illustration from the Boxer Codex. So, if you look at it, daghan kayo patik ang iyang lawas. Gikan sa iyang tiil, paingon sa iyang naong, napagid sa iyang dughan, napagid sa iyang headdress, iyang pudong, no, o ang accessories niya sa iyang, uh, iyang earrings, sa dalunggan. So, importante tingali kayo ni siya nga tao. Eh, important tingali kayo ni iya hang uh, status sa komunidad. Kay taghan man kayo sa patik. Next slide. So, we flash forward from the Boxer Codex to the 1600s by this illustration ni Father Francisco Alcina. Here is an illustration of a Visayan man na puno niya po patik ang iyang lawas. So, kung imo siyang i-compare sa Boxer Codex, medyo nilahit na ang, ang flow sa iyahang tattoo. But, tanawin niyo ang iyang legs, naalangya po ng vertical um, tattoo. Makita ni mo. So, could it have been nga lahi silang region sa Visayas? Could it have been nga lahi ang ilang ranggo sa society? Or could it have been um, the changing of times from the 1500s to the 1600s? Um, next slide. So, kaning Visayan tattooing, according sa Boxer Codex, da, na siya yung murag breastplate. One is ang characteristic sa, sa Visayas na tattooing. And there's lines and zigzag marks na nasa arms, nasa yung tughan, o nasa liog. So, it was documented that tattoos are for warriors. And dapat i-earn ni mo ni nga tattoo. You have to do an act of bravery. Uh, bravery is earned. It doesn't have to be in the battlefield. Uh, in terms of uh, traditional practices, bravery can be earned in hunting, in going, mag ka sa open sea, mga fishermen sa una, mga laud. That's an act of bravery po na consider sa una. So, um, a man without tattoos, uh, a man who tattoos himself without earning it will die or be cursed. Muni ilang ginatawag sa unang sibong. So, kani nga practice nga mutato ka without earning the right, naga exist yapon siya sa Mindanao. Uh, various subgroups also believe na kung imong i desecrate ang pagtatuwing sa imuha, mubalik na siya sa imuha. So, let's look at this uh, Visayan uh, tattoo. Wala na yung exist nga ma reference na to ani karon. Uh, next slide, please. But if we look at this next photo from 1973, uh, kang Pendergrass ni siya nga photo of a Tikopian man, so, which is an island of the Pacific to sa Pilipinas. So tanaw ni mo ang iyang tato, no? uh, similar kay siya sa Visayan nga tattooing. You will see the line nga naay pattern dari sa iyang dughan, kung napo dari sa iyang uh, 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 color bones na pit, ng mga triangular, very, very uh, reminiscent sa Visayan tattooing. And the photo is recent, from the 70s. Uh, next slide, please. So, just as it was recorded nga para ni sa mga warriors, kung wato ta sa Luzon, ang tattooing nila dito sa chest, warriors gapon. Now, the chest tattoo is 
re- reserve lang ni siya sa chess. There are other parts also, mga nila, that doesn't have to involve uh, being a warrior. Pero, in order for you to get this uh, chess tattoo, kinanglan sa ka mo, go sa head hunting and come home with a head. So, kani ang ilang ginatawa nga chakrag or binikbiking. No, so, ang upper two nga photos are from Kalinga, then the lower is Buntok na sila. So, although lahi sila nga region, pariha ang flow sa ilaha. Uh, next slide, please. Unya, kung imuha ni siyang tanawon, mo ni siya ang uh, ibaloy, which is igurot ya po ni siya nga groups. Dili na ni mo ni siya makitaan ka ron nga mga prak, nga tatuga exist, unlike the ones in Kalinga. But you can still see the difference, the similarities. I mean, the similarities on the chest how it goes in Ani. So, so Luzon in itself is very diverse in tattooing. Each region or class has its own distinct identity. So there's obvious similarity sa ilaha, pero nasa lahi-lahi nga kinds of regions. So this can be also used to identify kung ahakagikan. Same can be said sa Visayas. So next slide, please. So if we go to Mindanao, here is a very amazing uh, tattoo in the Mindanao groups nga that looks, that is very reminiscent of Visayas. No? Tanaw ni mo ang ilahang chest tattoo. The top photos from uh, Miss Ragragio, and then the bottom part is, dito ni sila nga groups in Northern Luzon, I mean, sorry, Northern uh, Mindanao, and it's very, very reminiscent to the ones in the Boxer Codex. So this is the exi- existing samples that mirror Visayan chest tattoo in form of our brothers in Mindanao. Next slide. But everything changed pag abot ani niya. In 1521, ni abot ang Europeans. And this changed our world forever. Next slide. So from on the left, kung imuang tanawan, this was the norm. Uh, a painting by, I believe this is by Panyares. So kung imuang tanawan, prior to the arrival of Spaniards, this was a uh, normal thing sa atong society. But since their arrival until... Uh, even now, what they have left in our society has changed. So, nana na sa right, ito, luan na tanila ang saon mo ka ng pagsuot o binani. And this was the basis na dayon sa ang ato ang uh, what is normal na dayon para sa tua. So, can you imagine the con- the contrasty of worlds na gigikanan sa ato ang uh, mga ninuno? No? So, other than the changes sa panamit na to, next slide, what other aspect that is affected after years of colonization? Next slide. And that would be perspective. So perspective is something that affects our sense of entertainment, how we filter uh, fear, joy, and even uh, fashion itself. Daku kayo na transition that was brought to us in the advent of colonialism. And this is something that we consider. Uh, next slide, please. So, what is modern and Western versus traditional? Diri na to na ma-distinguish in order for us to understand more in this ancient practice. So, in Western modern tattooing, pretty much it is more individualistic in nature. There is a, a, a sense of artistic freedom ng mong gichus sa tattoo. Pwede man nga ikaw may mupili sa tattoo design sa internet then mangita ka sa imuhang a well-known artist mo ato ka dito, mingon ka nga kaniyang ako ang design, ipabutang na ko ani. So ikaw nagpili sa design, ikaw nagpili sa meaning, ikaw nagpili sa location sa mga lawas. Pero napay ubang tao nga pwede mo, mo take the same exact design, pero lahi po ng iyang meaning para sa iya ha, depende kung how he translates that. So that is our modern expectation of what that doing is. But traditional is different to that. Kaya ang traditional reflects the community. Uh, ang design has already existed for years and years before uh, before ana. The placement has already been decided. And this reflects the community as a whole. Dili ka pwede maka-ingon nga dirin ako ibutang when you did not earn it. So that's a, a very, very different take on a different approach to traditional tattooing. Uh, next slide, please. An example of that would be the tamokos of uh, the Maori people of Aotearoa, which is New Zealand na nakaroon. So, very similar ang batik nila sa ilahang naong. No? Wala sila na ingon, wala sila na concern of their individualistic 
uh, aspect na gusto sila may unique, they all accept this regardless na similar sila. That's because laong kayo ang ilang pag-take ani. The tamoko itself represents years of genealogy na ilang gidibdib o pag-alsa. The swirl marks, uh, kaning mga the swirl-swirl na design sa ilang nahungar. Uh, Moni siyang reminiscent sa fern punch of uh, France or kaning pako bitaw. Uh, next slide, please. So, kanisha, ang um, just as uh, other indigenous groups, ang mga designs is based from nature. So, kanisha, ang design na tawag ani is bunga terong, na ni siya sa aturang silingan, sa Borneo nga uh, tato, which is based kuno ni siya sa bulak, sa uh, talong, or tiyan, sa baki. So, nature-based kanisha. Next slide. And of course, uh, this is from Mindanao na groups. Kani sila nga mga tattooing in which we call pangatob. Nani sila sa central Mindanao. And very, very co- similar na kayo sila. Um, wala kayo differences. Pretty much uniformity, no? And uh, here in Mindanao, it is believed that tattoos light the soul. So uh, in the afterlife, kuno umuglow kuno ang tattoo. And it will enable them to be identified by the ancestors who came before them. And it has a very similar... Um, belief to the Borneo tattoo, atong previous na slide na atong itanaw. So, next slide, please. So, muna siya ang differences between Western expectation of tattooing and indigenous tattooing. So, let's look into the current state of traditional Filipino tattooing. Next slide. So, the current state of uh, Filipino tattooing, next slide, please, is uh, dito sa Luzon. No? So, uh, that's the only existing that we know of, of Filipino tattooing. But back then, sa unang panahon, these tattoos are symbol, are, are earned. Ay ni ipatik, ibutang sa inuang panit. But now, medyo lahit naging siya. So a long-running ancient tradition has been altered to fit the demands of modern society. So na medyo mix emotions, anak, to the state of uh, this tradition now. Next slide, please. But other, aside kang apuwang od, there are surviving tattoo practices in isolated areas. Next slide, please. So this is the tattooing practices here in Mindanao. Um, it's existing, but it's rarely uh, put into the limelight. That's because of the isolation niya. Of course, you know, the common uh, uh, circumstance na kakitabo dali sa Mindanao. So, uh, but it still exists. Medyo vanishing na siya, pero ga... ga Buhaton paghihapon sa ito ang mga kaisunan na lumad. No? Um, next slide, please. And this is one of the practitioners, si Inay Norita Gabaw. Excuse niyo ako ang diil. Um, so she has been uh, my mentor as well in terms sa kaning tattooing. The insights of tattooing that they still hold dear and sacred in their hearts. Next slide, please. And... Napag yung mga tuwa hamakans from, from the south of Mindanao. So, if you compare the tattooings, the tattooing culture among sa isolated areas is still intact and hasn't been introduced to foreign tattoo expectations. Next slide, please. So, one of the reasons nga nung dili na ko siya pwede um, masaba, that's because na NCIP or uh, IPMR na when I visited the areas, na yung guidelines, na kasulatan, I met with the elders, so that we are. We will be able to protect the cultural integrity uh, from kanabitang muabut nga na the changing times. Next slide, please. So, padayon ta aning traditional tattoo. So let's look at the tools, the methods, and the ink. Next slide. So a common yud ka yung almost everybody knows nga nakadto na kabisita dito kung apuwang od that the tool she used is tunok sa paungon lemon thorn. And she would put it on a uh, stick, piece of wood, and then she would tap it. No, next slide. Uh, here are another illustration of the tattooing tools that existed in the Philippines. This is an illustration uh, from Lane Wilkins' book, uh, uh, Filipino Tattoos. So the upper, the top part, ang tawag ana kay Lufan, uh, used by the Bontok, ang lower ana kay uh, Carabao Horn na siya may ginagamit sa mga kalinga Japan. Next slide. Uh, pareha ani. Muni siya ang kalinga tattooing. Similar ni sila nga group ni Apo Wangod pero lahi ang ihang tool na gigamit ni Apo Wangod. So it shows us na dili lang day isa ra ang tool ni Wangod. Daghan pagide kayo. Next slide please. 
And if we explore even further, tanaw na to, money siya ang other tattooing tools. The top part ka ng Murag Puchillo is from Mindanao. What they do is, ilahang ginaslice sa, sa imuhang panit ang tattoo design, ila ding utangan o king. The bottom part, ka ng kinaubsan, hanpok na siya. Ang tawag na okbok mo na siya sa Luzon, Japan. And then uh, ang middle, uh, a tattooing tool na nice string. These are uh, in the archives of the Field Museum sa Chicago. So interesting kayo, the diversity of the tools sa dari sa Pilipinas. Next slide. So, uh, na record nga ang combs made from iron or brass points heated on fire. Napo dayo isang nga twigs with fine bamboo points. Now, kaning combs made from iron or brass, uh, next slide, is very reminiscent to one of the tools nga ginagamit diri sa Mindanao. This is brass nga uh, sing-sing ni siyang tawag ni kay uh, kawat, either sing-sing or aritis nga brass, ilang himuon ng needle uh, to use it as tools for tattooing. Now, it's very, very similar to the ones uh, documented of the ancient Visayan. Now, so here we, we see what it might have looked like. Next slide. <clears throat> but a long time ago, maskaraan pagiday kayo ang tattooing. Uh, Naina discover nga bone tools used for tattooing that dated 1,500 BC. Can you imagine unsa na siya kadugang? It just tells us that this is a very old, old tradition. There is years to refine to think, hundreds of years to refine to think, to reflect on this practice of tattooing. It must be very, very important to us as a people. Uh, mas dugay pa ni siya nga time kaysa time from um, Magellan to us now, 2020. And can you imagine this tradition being long-running like that? And if you look at this bone tools, kanang bottom part, um, mona siya ako ang recreation of this old tool. Uh, if you look at the structure, next slide please, it's a very reminiscent to what the Polynesians use. This is uh, um, bone tools also that they use to hand tap sa mga Samoans. And hand tap method, bones, very reminiscent. So, nganong daghan lagi yung similarities sa Pacific o sa ato, ah? We'll discover that. So, next slide. So, the, the methods that we have is hand tap method, hand poke method, incision method, napoy method na similar sa tebori o sa kyan. Ito bitong taas na stick na mura siya itatu sa imuha. There is an artifact na nakaroon sa uh, Dumaguete sa Anthropology Museum na display. So, the ink. Next two slides, please. So the ink, kang apo wang od, ang iyang gagamiton nga ink is anuos, soot na iyang gagamiton. So mo siya sa kaldero, sa gulan niya, o ka ng um, tubig, and it creates the ink. And it's a, it, it is a messy ordeal because anuos man siya, beru, murag mo mantingalin ang other term. Uh, next slide please. There is also um, candle nut or molokana ang tawag ani sa ginagamit ni siya sa Southern Mindanao ang term na ginatawag nila ani sa katunga indigenous community is bio so what's um, cool about this also is ginagamit sa ni sa mga Hawaiians this is what they call the kukui nut so there you have again the similarities between uh, the groups in the Pacific and in the Philippines next slide pero na record nga adamar resin called salong or sasalngan from a tree called the Waan, which is a variety of mahogany, were used as ink in Visayas and Bicol. So, kani po siyang resin, kani siyang um, sap, were also used to light torches. So, interesting kayo. Um, if you look at the Lawaan tree, the next slide, please. Kaning Lawaan tree, I'm, I'm pretty sure na ani sa mga lasang pa diya sa Cebu. Adri sa Mindanao, daghan pa kaning Lawaan tree. So, kaning Lawaan tree, it produces uh, sap Kaning sap niya, next slide, ang tawag ani nga sap is almasiga. So kaning almasiga, um, another term ani is salumayag. So similar siya sa katong recorded nga salong ang tawag. So salumayag, sa salngan, salumayag. And it's also used as ink, just as what was recorded. So it muni siyang ginagamit nga ink sa mga groups dari. Ang tawag ani is bulitik. And just as what's recorded, uh, documented, next slide please, Mobo niya siya ginagamit sa as torches. So here's a photo from a documentary about the Higaunon people na naghimo silag torch using the, the sap from the Lawan tree. And next slide, three, please. So the ink that it produces, mo niya ang itsura sa pangatob. Mo niya ang ink 
nga na produce sa sa salawaan so it would have looked like this to ang ancient Visayan. now one of the uh, na mention ni Alcina is um na a bluish color so oftentimes depending on the person's skin kaning mga pangat of the Mindana would appear bluish or greenish it could have been nga inanay yang nakita when he documented because Alcina did not have any other indication of a blue ink next slide so let's look at the painted Visaya. No, next slide. So ang painted Visaya, ang iconic yung kayo nga framework is kaning kaning gasunod garan sa legs. No, mo ni ginatawag nga labid or sa bicol tilang tilang. So kaning labid is very very uh, intricate with zigzag patterns and even ang alubot na ay floral designs. Uh, mo ni siya ang iconic Visaya as opposed to the other groups. Next slide. There is also what is called the bangut or langi, which was described as a gaping uh, jaw. So, kung tanaw ni Musya, as illustrated by Lane Wilkins in his libro, nai it mimics a crocodile nga ganganga. So it's very intimidating to look. And just as any other beliefs in the Philippines, crocodile is very symbolic. And to put it on the face with an intimidated look tells nga kani siya nga tao. Gahit nagi kay nga warriors. So, gi record po ni nila nga, the bravest of the brave will undergo the face tattoo. Dako na kani silag na earn, dako na kani silag rango sa society. And it is very the same also sa Luzon. Next slide. So, kung tanaw ni mo ni nga uh, photos from the group sa Luzon, uh, sa far left kaning, sa kaning left sa buntok, naagya po siya sa iyang jaw na uh, designs. So, ngilingig na nila nga tao, warrior na kayo niya, niya sa right, na anapot sa iyang deri. So the other one is right here, and the other one is on the cheek side. So sakit gigesya tanawon. Next slide, please. So men were tattooed all over, and only sa hands, according to Alcina. Pero it, medyo siya ga uh, dili siya consistent sa illustrations sa boxer codex. Kina may babae nga puno ug tattoo, no? So one thing is for sure, though, that tattoos differ from gender. So great measures were taken to ensure that tattoos were appropriate to the gender. Next slide. So similar gya po niya sa mga uh, sa Luzon, nga ang lalaki lahi siya og structure, ang babae lahi og structure. It would be um lahi you gaya na no kung ang lalaki mo mag ang tattoo sa lalaki ibutang sa babae, ang babae nga tattoo ibutang sa lalaki. And this has to be uh, assured sa practitioner nga nagbutang ani because next slide. The differences in tattoo designs amongst gender reflect the role in society. So important thing you kaya ni. So tattoos are personal descriptions. Mura siya community-based individuality. Yapo no. So in order for us to dig deeper, let's go into the linguistic patterns. Next slides. So next slide. So linguistic pattern. Kung may unta sa English good day, sa Spanish buenos dias. So in Bisaya, maayong adlaw, Tagalog magandang araw, sa Hiligay nun, maayong adlaw, sa Binukid, dari sa Bukid nun, maayad haldaw, sa Waray, maupay nga adlaw, sa Maranao, mapya adlaw, sa Manubo, maupya adlaw. So kung Bisaya ka, makadungog ka o Maranao, maingon o uh, mapya adlaw, automatically you will know that mapya means maayo and automatically that in the Manubo, adlaw means adlaw. It will not be confusing to us, as opposed to na German mo ingon sa imuha. It would process for us longer to to translate. That's because of the similarities sa tuong region. Although na differences, but the similarities daghan magyukayo para masabta nato. Now let's pan out to a bigger picture. Next slide. So let's look at the Austronesian connection nato. Next slide. So sa counting system sa mga bisaya kita. Moingon tao isa dua tulu empat lima enam tagalog isa dua tulu empat lima anim so very very similar in counting ang napulu sampu so let's go to Malaysia they would say satu dua tiga empat lima enam ang ilang napulu sepulu very very the same no so let's go to the Maoris of New Zealand they say tahi rua ilang tulu turu ang wa ang upat na himugwa ang ilang lima rima 
ang ilahang pitu, witu. So, grabe ka, similar. Let's go a little bit farther sa Pacific. Mga ito sa Samoa. Um, tasi, lua, ilang duha, lua, ilang tulo, tulo, yapon, ilang upat, pa, ilang lima, lima. Ang ilang unum, uno, ilang pitu, fitu, ang ilang napulo, sefulo. So let's go to Hawaii. And in Hawaii, kay state naman ginyo sa America. But let's listen to their counting system. It's kahi, lua, ang tulu, kulu, ang ilang lima, lima gihapon, ang ilang unum, uno. So very, very similar. No, bisan pag sa kalayo. So next slide, please. Even the word tattoo itself comes from the Polynesian word tatao or tatatao. So kung tanaw na to ang word nga tatao, the closest ana dari sa tua is tatak sa Tagalog. Ang meaning sa tatak is tatakan ni mo, markahan ni mo, to mark. Tatak, tattoo. Diba? So there's that connection there. So tatak, batak, batek, patik, patik. Nahimo na din ang satwa. So these are just few examples of the commonalities and similarities that we share with the wider Astronesian people. Even kung maingon tao mata sa ilahang mata gihapon, ang ato ang langit na nai accent gamay pag travel sa Polynesia, nahimo na siya glani. So, grab di kayo ang similarities and it's, you know, very, very amazing and interesting at the same time. Maka mind blown yung kayo. Next slide. So, the Astronesian people are this group of people who decided to migrate sa ocean. Kuan kayo sila, ngingiki ng mga tao. Okay? Imagine in ancient times, with the te- technology that they have, they were able to migrate the islands. So, even sa mga bangka, it was the Astronesian people nga muna kabuhat o cutting. Kuna-una agin sila nga, atong bangka, mubiyahi kita glayo. So, there's a similarity in in even our structures, atong mga technology, there's a similarity in language, there's a similarity in practice. Gaamin ta dari sa tua in Indonesia, uh, gaamin yapon sila, na mga groups nga gaamin. Kanang mutang-tang og chinelas, ay mo sulod sa balay. Polynesian people, inana yapon siya. Og labi na kanang nata sa lasang, di ba, makakita ta og kahoy. Bisan pag ang mga taga Luzon, Ilocano, nga muanha sa Cebu, makaagi og kahoy, automatically medyo muanay gid sila tabi apo. Kuan universal language o understandable kayo nga kabuluton sa ilang pasabot, may magtabi apo. It's a very same uh, practice throughout uh, Astronesia. So with these similarities, next slide. Naagya po ning similarities sa mga symbols. So if you look at the left is a design from Borneo and it's very very similar to Southern Manubo. So Si Eleanor, kaning nasa left, so nag uh, correspond me. She's uh, been doing research on Borneo also and reviving uh, the, their practice. So nangutan ako kung sa meaning ani. So niingon din siya, ang ihang reply, ang amang tawagan niya is bulon. So bulan, bulan, moon din is yeah. So kasabot ko derecho what she was trying to say. Next slide. So the tattoos reflect beyond the practice of tattooing. Next slide. Mga tattoo designs, ginabutang po ni siya sa mga items sa maaning butanganan ug humay this uh, the designs etched on this reflect the tattooing also ug ang purpose pud aning object ng butangan humay is very symbolic to the designs that are applied next slide same can be said sa Mindanao uh, ang mga designs sa pangatog ga exist yapon like this one nga naa sa ihang musical instrument next slide so sa Visayas what was recorded na ang individual na walay tatu, wala ginis siya tatu ang tawag sa iha kuraw. So kung nanay patik, either lipong or luping sa, sa biko, lipong. So ang lipong sa bisaya, muramanag na, na lipong. No? So na terminology, ibuhatan yung terminology sa mga bisayan. So being kuraw would be considered as wala pa siya na initiate into manhood. Mura siya pisot. Sa bagha, mura bitaw, remember when you were a child, unya, kung pisot ka, Nagyo kay something sa imuha nga missing pa. So same could be said aning tattooing. Um, next slide please. So uh, sa unpublished book ni Sir Marianito Luzpo dito sa Buhol, uh, Visual Motives on Pre-Hispanic Buhol Pottery uh, with uh, SA Tutor. Next slide please. Na sila identify as the Lupingan Jars. Muni ilang na, na, na collect. So the Lupingan Jars are engraved nga gibase nila from the tattoos of the Visayan. So muna siya ang glimpse nato sa mga designs. Daghan man ka ayo, Very, very diverse design. And next slide, please. Uh, one of my favorite 
shards nasa museo subo and every time i visit the museum i always stop and you know take time to reflect ani ganahan di kay ko ani saya and you will see zigzag marks zigzag designs unya kani siya nga mga nga designs are found on artifacts all over visayas next slide so here are other slides found, I mean, other uh, patteries with the same designs found all over Visayas. So dili lang gide siya limitado to one region, no? Next slide. And if we look at this design and compare its illustration in Father Francisco Alcina of this Visayan um, uh, mananagat, tanaw ni mo ang ihang tiyan, ihang arms, na nga design. So just as the art, katong mga items sa Luzon o katong sa, sa Mindanao, Nagi hapon diriga mirror. And next slide. Naga gina mirror niya ang naasa patteries. Next slide, please. So, pre colonial practices that ginatawag nato are katutubo in nature. Next slide. So, this important piece of illustration that was drawn by Father Francisco Alcina uh, is a glimpse of the forgotten Visayan past and the practices it has. No, it's often left to the imaginations of people. It's a very, very um, raw kayo. Kayo bitaw ka nga dili na maninan ang Visayas karon. This existed a long time ago in Visayas. Next slide. So let's put this in comparison. Kaning duha ka tao nga gadala og armas who's doing a baile, a danza, is doing a war dance. So war dances are still being performed here in Mindanao. So, sa ubos, muna siya ang war dance namo mo sa bukid noon. Ang tawag ani saot as performed by Aki, ang suluduan, saway. So, it very mimics uh, the war dance niya na sa illustration ni Alcina, no? And there are war dances performed all over other groups sa Mindanao. Sa Tausog, sa Nakan, Mandaya, sa Manubo, and so on and so on. So, next slide. So, another one is naikahoy gidrawing si Alcina nga naibalay. Same treehouse exists all over um, Mindanao. Here are photos of treehouses in nasa bukid noon from uh, 1900s to sa Mandaya, mga record ni Faye Cooper Cole. So, illustration na lang sa Visayas, pero sa diri sa Mindanao, napag yung mga raw photos. Uh, next slide. Even sa textile na katong um, the male and female Visayan royalty, ang ilahang garb nila na embroidery nga uh, sa bottom niya. Kung gitan o oh, maayo ang ilahang uh, designs sa embroidery, na mind blown kay ko kay na magini sa Mindanao, nakita ko mang ginian. The bottom part is from the Bukidnon tribes na naanis siya sa uh, archives sa Field Museum sa Chicago. And it's the same. O nga nga time, no? Uh, found sa Bukidnon. Next slide. Even to the weapons, Kaning a weapon nga iyang gibitbit na yung mga artifacts na nga gina-display, gina-exhibit sa, sa um, Museo Sogbo, sa USC Museum, and sa mga other museums, it's very reminiscent to the Balarao of Mandaya. Tanaw ni mo ang iyang structure. Next slide, please. So, kumunta na tag tattoo designs, there are similar designs in relation sa mga astronician ng mga Filipinos. Next slide. So, if we look at the Visayan Pintados, there's floral design, on the on the chest and they look similar to like that next slide so nai design gagaran sa iyang lubot next slide please and kaning nasa lubot it's very similar sa um Molokan Island inani ang ilahang tattoo design now Molokan Island there are no stranger to the Visayans there are records nga nai conflict even uh, Gihimuan nagpainting niya sa tutor nga nasa sa buhol of the conflict between the Molokan Islands and the Visayan Bulanon Pintados. So if you look at their tattooing sa Ilaha, very, very similar sa Visayan uh, Boxer Codex design. Next slide. And there are other designs found all over uh, the Philippines. No? Na I design uh, uh, sa Mindanao that looks similar ato. Even sa Ilocano, a different variation. Next slide. All the way to the Pacific and the neighboring islands, na yung mga variations ani nga design. Next slide. And even to this uh, tattoo nga siyang likod, very similar to the Visayan one. Next slide. So let's look at this floral design nga naaya po inani sa Maloko, atong siya prominent sa Maloko Island, na ang ilang ginatawag ani is Oyale. So kanisya, ang backstory ani niya, creation story din siya. For one design, it contains 
a whole um, oral tradition of Persian story nila. Next slide. So kaninga design similar sa sa Visayan flor floral design, no? So naapoy na mention si Scott of Alawig design. So the Alawig design contains also a uh, creation story sa mga Visayas, one of the variations na nasulti ni Legaspi, which takes another uh, entire separate lecture. Next slide. And there's this amazing goal na, na, na dubbed there is a Philippines. If you look at the design, Nia is very, very similar sa, sa katong nasa Boxer Codex. Um, could this have been what the original Lawig design from the Boxer Codex looked like? Uh, let's Next slide, please. So let's go to the beliefs of and uh, connection to the tattooing. Next slide. So kung tanan na itong Visayan, daghan kayo ang mga zigzag. Daghan kayo ang zigzag um, design. So this is from nature. And as Visayas being island, these are water designs. Nakuha um, gyapon nila sa ilang environment. So in order for us to know more, nga nung water design man sa Visayas, nga nung mahilig mag water design ng Visayas. In order for us to know more, let us understand ang karaan nilang pagtuo. Next slide. So the old religion, um, like this one, uh, daghan man siya, uh, ma-available ma man siya sa online, no? So, uh, there are entities sa atong palibot, sa kalibutan, na ay taas, na ay lupa, na po'y kailaliman underworld. Now, they represent different aspects of the beliefs. Now, the creature is also, for sa, sa langit, kanapod ng langgam also represents that aspect of, of the world. And creatures such as um, mga lizards nga naadari sa yuta and creatures like mga, mga buaya nga nasa tubig also reflect, mirror to those corresponding niya nga, nga belief. So next slide please. So kaning belief of division of kaitasan, lupa, o the underworld, kaning kailaliman, also reflects pag uli sa balay. No? Busa ang mga balay sa una, ang atop, lahi siya og aspects sa gapuyan, lahi po siya aspects sa ilalong. Now, next slide. There are certain objects na ilahang ginabutang to add different parts of the house because it symbolizes and it represents that part of the belief. For instance, headhunting. Oftentimes, na ritual na ilang idalun sa ilalong sa balay to perform rituals. That's because ang ilalong sa balay is the underworld and the underworld are where the ancestors gather. Next slide. So, kung naay division in earth sa langit, yuta, o uh, kailaluman, sa balay naay division sa atop, pahagapuyo, o kaning sa ilalong, same can be said of the human body. Naaya po'y division. The head is different to what the body represents. It's also different sa tiil. So, in this photo, naay sayaw ang ilang ginabuhat. This is from 1904. Um, naay sayaw now, what they do is actually storytelling. Gasturiya sila og story pamaagi sa pagsayaw. Now, as the story goes, the dance also goes. Ang sayaw, ang motion sa sayaw, muoy gadictate sa story. So, if the certain symbol sa hands goes up, it means nga niyato siya sa langit in the story. And if it's going down, niyato siya sa underworld. So, one of the reasons nga nung headhunting was prominent sa una because it is believed that ang ang ulo Naadiha ang mga gahom, ang kagahaman. So if you take the head, kung putlo ni mo ang ulo, and then you take it back to your village and everyone feast, uh, they crack the head open and they have a brain feast, it means they're partaking also that power sa iyahang, uh, katong sa iyahang mga ancestors. So if we look at the hands niya, next slide. I hope that made sense in you. Ha? So if we look at the slide of this Ibaloy girl sa uh, Benguet, modern day Baguio na niya, if you look at the hands, you will see zigzag designs, watermarks. No, nasa yung duwa kabukamot. Next slide. And these watermarks on the on the hands are very reminiscent sa Visayan uh, tattooed warrior. Kung tanawon ni mo ang iyang hand, na ay watermarks same atong babae. Next slide. So the watermarks also goes down all over the legs. No, na na ay going down siya. So um, we've established the significance of the lower part of the body, the legs. So, kanisha underworld na nisha. So, it must have something to do with reaching out to the ancestors. Now, figuratively speaking, 
um, this is traveling to the underworld where the ancestors reside. Now, next slide, please. This is a much more, uh, mas detailed nga of the Pompeii women from 1870. It's very, very similar to the Visayan. Nagya po siya watermark during design. Uh, next slide. So as we all know, nga kaning atong mga ninuno, when they die, second burial man sila, kaluto ng ilang bungo, ilaray din sila aning boat ship coffin. Dili ni siya isa katao, pero daghan ni sila ginasulod ani ng mga ancestors at niya, yung forefathers. One of the reasons is, because a shape ni siya boat, because naaman siya, travel man siya towards the water. Here we go again. Pabiyahi siya sa, sa tubig. Uh, some of the burial uh, caves and coffins that were found on mga caves like uh, sa Gindulman, sa Buhol, kaninga mga boat na coffin facing ni sila sa sea as if it's ready to sail, going to the underworld. So, this also mirrors in the rituals. Next slide, please. There is a Mindanao, naa sila mga rituals sama sa panalwahig. So, kani sila, even though ang kaning bukid nun people, naa namin sa bukid, layo namin sa ocean, there's still long uh, memory na ang mga mga rituals ng ipaw ilang ihatod para sa ilang mga ninuno through body of water, eventually going back to the ocean. Next slide, please. So this is also done, a similar ritual is done also sa Apayao, uh, called uh, the Samalawi nga, ilagya pong ipaanod sa tubig, going back to the ancestors. Next slide, please. And what's really interesting is the leg design, the labid, is the first design that a uh, man gets before anything else, going up to the face as he pro um, progresses into his stages in life. So... The one of the reasons also nga nung nai zigzag pattern sa iyang legs no is because he is continuing that tradition. I had niya gipatik ang ang tatu yasang gipanghiran dito sa iyang mga ninuno. Can you imagine how many fathers and forefathers this person must have had that also has this ta, um watermarks on their legs? The watermarks connecting to the ancestors and ancestors for thousands of years to those 1500 BC na nagpadayon ang mga tradisyon. Dako kayo sila respect sa ilahang community, sa atong community back in ancient times. So that's why it is very, very sacred. Prior to getting tattoos, certain protocols has to be observed, to be followed, to be earned in the battlefield, and certain rituals has to be done to, to earn these tattoos. Next slide, please. So this is a modern interpretation of the tattooing, a continuation of the slides. Next slide. So it depends on how the, in, the individual would look at tattooing. So we can either look at it from the outside perspective, katong mga nag-take of documents, or we can put ourselves in the slippers or the bahag of our ancestors and look, it, look at it from our perspective. No? So kwan kayo siya, it's a continuation of tattoo. For, for an individual to carry such tattoo means you're carrying the traditions of the old that you're carrying the traditions in mong lulu. With matoy tulay. Next slide, please. With this, I would, uh, happy tatam again, um, na phrase from a uh, talaandig artist sa iyang song, nasunog na ang tulay na tanging nag-uugnay ng hapon at ngayon. With the advent of colonialism, nawala ni siya nga practice. Nasunog ni siya. So we have lost this connection of our ancestors. That's why in the beginning, for us, uh, in the Lumad environment, it is very, very important to have a connection with your elders, well, forefathers. Next slide. So there are many more that hold the knowledge, the knowledge of our ancestors, your ancestors, locked in tattoos. Next slide, please. So what we have discussed, Karun, is just um, concepts of tattooing. And we just talked about one design, the watermark design. Daghan pa kaayo mga designs, no, locked into this, uh, the wisdom that are locked into this. Next slide. So a lot of changes has happened since the advent of colonialism. Some things are better left unchanged. Some of the some mga practices there is some in the now. So keep our ancestral connection. Uh, what connects you to being Bisaya? What connects you to being a Cebuano? Uh, to those who came before you and like, established the Muhang identity. Next slide. With this, I would say, pangitaa ang kaalam sa imuhang ninuno. Maura ka to, o daghang salamat.
All right. Thank you very much. That was a very interesting and enlightening uh, lecture about Visayan tattoos and Visayan designs. But actually, we act, we got a very, uh, how do you call this, a different perspectives actually in, about Philippine tattooing. In fact, in this uh, discussion, in the lecture of uh, Mr. Piper Abbas, um, he was able to compare the tattoos or the tattoo practice in the Visayas in the Philippines and even uh, the Pacific, so multicultural siano ang approach. At the same time, it is multidisciplinary. Okay, uh, we were able to even see the relationship, for example, of tattoos vis-a-vis uh, -vis the beliefs of a certain people, and we can see a lot also of uh, compar uh, contrast and comparisons, comparison similarities, uh, even no, and uh, very that's very interesting that it it tells us that we are very connected, uh, not just to uh, the, the the Visayas region, but also from the other regions in the Philippines at the same time, even regions outside or our nearby uh, neighbors. So like the Pacific. So very interesting. I even had a lot of insights written down. Some I probably will share with uh, Mr. Abbas in a little while. Um, Mr. Piper is actually experiencing a little bit of um, problem connecting with us because uh, they're experiencing a brownout. I think he's in Bukidnon right now. So we see we're getting guests actually even outside of Cebu. But uh, we're getting him through phone patch, and I think he's already here. We have already managed to get hold of him. Sir Piper? Hello? May mga po ng otro. Nag-brown out. Kisiri sa po ang tropo kitnon. O lagi. Pero sige lang, magitaan dyan na itong paagi makasturya ta kay daghan kaayo o mga pangutan, ano nga, nagi pang post sa ato ang comments page niya. Nindot ato sa yun ding matubag and at the same time na ating ali uban nga gusto nga maklarified about certain things about tattooing. And of course, we want to extend also our, um, how do you call this, uh, kanang pakigsturya ni mo no, pakighinabi ni mo, kay grabe ka interesting ning tattooing. Pero uh, ato ta sa atong unang mga pangutana, we will try as much as possible to uh, accommodate all of the questions uh, posted here in our comments page. But here's the first one, Sir Piper. Sir Piper. This comes from Minxie Villaver. Thank you, Minxie Villaver. Says, Sir Piper, Sir Piper, idol tika. Wow. What is your opinion when Hispanistas say nga dapat daw nakaagi judkag pangayaw karon para lang na ay bisaya nga patik or patik? Wala daw right ang mga filams nga bisaya magpapatik o binisaya if wala sila nakaagi sa C rating. What do you think about that, sir? Um, okay, that was a uh, salamat. Oh, that was a very uh, interesting question. So, um, one of the things, Mangud, in terms of tattooing, and this is just from the elders that I've spoken with and uh, how I observe tattooing, is so tattooing is looked as sacred. Palaan yung kayo ni siya, murag, nice sense of tattoo. Even there is sa mga kamanubuan, there is a uh, mountains of Pukinon, just by approaching an elder with tattoos, you can't just open up tattooing because there's a sense of tattoo, there's a sense of um, deep mystery behind it. So there are protocols for you to even speak about it. First, ang pagdaling mo sa sinsilyo, manangit sa kanyang maayon, no? Because not only are you talking about tattoo, you're also talking about the ancestors kung sa baga. So with that said, the non-Filipino, ang kanalo ang mga Hispanistas, if that's what yang itawa. May element o sahay nga dili ma-reveal para sa ilaha. Regardless of what they think, at the end of the day, the elders o katong mga naay nagdalaan ni nga mga tradisyon, naadari ang unsa ni, naadari sila mo'y mag-decide para na. I don't know if that made sense to the question that she was trying to ask. Yung mga two-part question, mating alito. And as far as the Bill Amps in Ana Dugar, um, their blood being half Filipino just from Sakwa Lugar nga mga part does not disqualify them from claiming their heritage as a Filipino. For instance, ako, hindi mong 
po makaingon na um, pure, bisa na sa buwang lulo, pure na lumad. Eh, na naman sa mga kayaan nga, na, i-flash, balik ka po. naman sa mga. So, um, that does not disqualify my grandfather from uh, going to sa iyang ancestor, sa iyang mother's side. Um, uh, often times, sa uh, lumad culture, very strict yan na sila kung ipaglalit pa ka or hack pa ka, naiupan sa groups na strict yun sila anak. But that does not disqualify you to claim that heritage sa imuang blood na nataman na siya di ako saman ng imuang mabuhat. Di pa nga nakaman ka, you were chosen to be of that lineage. So I don't know if that answer that made sense for the, for that particular question. What uh, So you're saying, Sir Piper, that uh, anyone, even if different ang iyong culture or iyong background, basta interested, will just have to go through uh, the process, no, mga pananghid, um, uh, going through the, uh, how do you call this, the practices that are needed before one can get a tattoo. As long as they go through that, you're okay if they get uh, a tattoo. Not traditional, I think they mean traditional ta- tattoo. So what would have been more appropriate in a sense is that tattoo, tattooing connection, much as say, muhang lineage, lugar, no, for instance, the Visayan watermarks. So your ancestors, lugar ng mga Visaya, ng mga Cebuano, would have had this. So ikaw, kung descended ka dito ng Cebuano, taga, it would have been more appropriate for you to wear their tattooing cake. You know what you receive just as they received that from their Cebuano ancestors? It would be not so appropriate if dili ka Cebuano and you would know nothing about Cebuano culture. No, for instance, Cebuano lugar ka, gusto lugar ka, putangan ka, o Tagalog ka tattoo. Then the Tagalog ancestors mo claim sa imo nga na hindi Cebuano ka, hindi mo na noong Tagalog. So mura siya ginanap ito nga, how can you go home to your identity if you were the marks of someone else's? Yeah. So this is coming from someone who really... Uh, you know, you, who sees tattoo as really a part of who one the person is, meaning you really have to go back to your roots, no? And uh, did it lang just for anything you're going to get a tattoo, but you have to consider also knowing what you're getting, what design you're getting, what's the background, what's the meaning behind. Is that what you're saying, sir? Um, what I said, Inanna, um, for example, a Manubo person. Murag, dili would, murag ma, a strange kayo if they would receive a foreign tattoo from a different group. Kanya, dili, dili na niya mayukulik sa ilahan, claim nga, oh, this is my identity. Yes, yes. But what would you think about a tattoo, sir, like a modern person, basically just copying the designs because you can find it in books, maybe in even webinars like this, no? Um, and they just merely copy the design because they like it. So you, you're not for that? Um, Naana na sa iya ang conviction tingali no? Naana na sa iya kung okay ra ba sa iya ha? Nagamito na iya kung nakunvict ba siya baan ang identity. But that would be kaya nalain kayo sa ato nga group. For instance, niya ito lang ka niya ito lang ka ane nga group. Ipupa ni mo ang iya ang tato. Kaya wala kayo nahibalan ane nila nga group. Wala mang gani ka ni Apil sa ila hapag tanong. Wala ka ni Apil sa ila hapag harvest. You neither share their struggle of this particular group. You look at it and you took something aesthetic because you think it was cool for you. So then it doesn't make any difference to the Spaniards who came here. Yeah. So in what we're saying now is one has to, when you get a tattoo, it has to be something authentic for you. It has to have uh, meaning for you, especially meaning in terms of being part of that culture, part of that heritage. So uh, thank you for, for yeah thank you for that for answering that question, Sir Piper. By the way, uh, there's a sort of a thought here that goes around. Now we're talking of Visayan tattoos and tattooing, but we're talking also of other cultures about how they do their tattoos. I think you said it in your lecture, Sir. No, nga, um, there's no more evidence or uh, how do you call this? No more. Th- things that we can find more about uh, Visayan tattooing, it's totally gone. And especially kay wa kayo lumad din hinga uh, people in the Visayas. Is that right, sir? Yeah. And that's why we, we get the comparisons, we get uh, similarities and contrast also from our other, uh, how do you call this, regions, no? from other regions who still have their lumads with them and also of our neighbors. That's why we are going through this study in a, uh, the study of tattoos in a multicultural way. Okay. 
Yes. Now, uh, we go to the second question. Can we flash the second question? This comes from uh, Ohoy Tapulanga. I don't know if this is his uh, correct name, no, but he's, here's the question. Is it necessary to continue the practice of traditional tattooing despite the changing mores of our time? If yes, how can we continue such tradition without commodifying it? Did you get the question, sir? Sir Piper? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is it, the first question is, is it necessary to continue the practice of traditional tattooing despite the changing mores or customs of our time? If yes, how can we continue such tradition without commodifying it? Or maybe, uh, how do you call this? Profit, you know, profiting from it? Something like that. Uh, um, this is important. Kung we commemorate sila. So how how much? Para sa ako alang nila, yeah, and uh, I don't speak for all. Um, but I value my ancestry. I value my family, their history. Uh, ang ina nabitaw. Um, we've lost so much already. Sa pagabot since 1500, we've lost so much that changed na kayo ng atong time. So, if we don't take care of it, ang iyang integrity, mawala gin siya sa tua. And kung mawala siya sa tua, that's the last link of that one. We conform to what the foreigners have uh, wanted us to conform to God. So, Nagkahan kayo sa mga, na binadiri sa Mindanao for the longest, medyo na, na siglut mag kayo ang culture diri sa Mindanao, ang mga, mga lumad groups. So, nagkahan kayo, without um, mainstream media na hibaluan na nag-thrive, yakapun sila. And karun pa ganin nato ni Katariskubrihan, karun pa nato ni sila, ah, karun pa siya daabot sa knowledge sa, sa urbanized Filipino cities. Pero nag-thrive siya, mayo ang ilahang konsenin, mayo ang ilahang Okay, so you're saying that it is important to continue the practice of traditional tattooing. But of course, uh, although despite the changing of the mores of our time, we still have to also continue while continuing the practice, the integrity must also be preserved. Okay, it's, I think that's what uh, Sir Piper is telling us. No, um, Yeah. Um, but how do we continue such traditions, sir, without commodifying it or profiting from it? Oops, uh, I think we we lost him. Uh, we lost Sir Piper for a bit. Uh, we will. Okay. Oh, here, here, he's back. Okay, sir. Okay. So, how do we continue? Uh, how do we? How do we ensure that the, the tradition continues, but we don't commodify it? So, um, one of the reasons, aning mga, uh, if you go to the community, aning kung saan, aning sa mga lumad communities mo, mo agi sa kasa, uh, NCIP, IPM, or nila, because of this, uh, um, mga, ilang kibantayan, ito, kung ang kultura, nga hindi ma, ma-influensyahan, no? So, for me, uh, it's, it begins with knowing yourself. This, para sa ko, uh, my journey started by knowing ah, hindi ka na kong mama, ah, hindi ka na kong papa, kinsa akong lolo, and I just went as far back as, as I could. And this journey of asking as far back akong may nagstorya, may tagang kayo may panding kita po, and I guess this only sang na change to how to preserve it, how to continue it. And in the long run, na realize din ako nga, it doesn't matter nga hindi siya uh, pangwartahan. The, the elders here, wama po sila nang nangita o pangwartahan. The, the, the sense of connection, the sense of culture is hindi man mabayaran. Um, ang important is you have that connection. You have that uh, awareness to what this symbolizes for you as your people for hundreds and thousands of years that connection and the rest will just fall apart and that's just a lang as a personal journey yes okay so um i think what you're saying sir is that it's always the intention no but uh for those who are really want to be authentic about the this they really have to uh there's a different 
how do you call this? There are aspects to the practice of tattooing that cannot be also paid. Yeah. Yes. Do, I like that the word no, due diligence. Give the due diligence. All right. Um, Sir Piper, um, this is actually an insight that I got. Uh, it, it was one, it, it was mentioned actually in the first part of your lecture that uh, it seems that that's the, what, the beauty of these lectures actually that uh, we get to get um, an idea of how our uh, ancestors thought, no? Uh, even way before the Western influence got to us, but uh, you said that something like, this was implied in your lecture, that everything that requires pain is already a big feat for us, uh, for our uh, pre-colonial Cebuanos, our ancestors, meaning pain is equals to bravery, like getting a tattoo or going hunting or fishing because you're going to a, uh, to a place that you do not know or is unknown or, you know, unsure. And head hunting, you also mentioned head hunting. Would you say that that's how, in a sense, uh, our ancient Cebuanos or our pre-colonial Cebuanos, our ancestors, uh, saw things? One of the perspectives, nila, sir. One of the beliefs. Um, this one, para sa kwa, takes time. There's a lot of aspects. Uh, there's a lot of indigenous aspects that are very, very deep. That isang sa kwa karon katunan pag yapo na kusya. Katunan pag yapo na ko. Sulay ug sabot for the most part. There are probably things nga dili nato makarelate until we actually experience it. We actually be there. Ma mafeel na ginato niya actual. Mafeel na to ang actual danger, ang actual possibility nga mauna ni, ang actual possibility nga ni Daug na yung kuk. Kani dito ang tanan nga. But these are the things nga maybe sa ako ang kuan makaroon di iba na ko siya makuli answer. Okay. Anyway, sir, um, before we proceed to uh, the next questions, we still have several questions. We'd like to let you breathe a bit. And so we're going to give a trivia. We will make do with what we have just as long as uh, uh, you are still with us, sir. That's, that's fine. Um, let's have a trivia. And these questions, actually, the questions of our trivia were, were prepared by Sir Piper himself. So, but, and if you get to answer the, give the correct answer first, and uh, you give the correct answer, and you are able to send in the, the right answer first, you are going to be able to get a prize from Gabi Isa Kabilin. Let's check out the first question. Everyone ready? Our first trivia about our topic this afternoon. This is the first question. Trivia number one. What is a leg tattoo called? So again, what is a leg tattoo called? Sayo na kaayo na. Uy! Iyan mga ganitong gisuwat sa kuan sa slide. So if you were really listening and you were looking, watching us, you'll be able to get this. Right? We'll uh, we'll try to announce the winner later if we still have time, if we're able to get the winner already. If not, we will be posting the winners of our trivia uh, after our uh, online activity or our webinar this afternoon. Let's go to the sec to the next. I think this is the fourth question. Next question, please. Sir Piper, this is the question. This is from Jackie Amazona Claven. This is a uh, kauban si Rafi nga ni Ingon gani siya excited gani siya mo kanang mo maminaw sa ato ang uh, webinar karong hapuna kay ganahan sa kani siya niya ug mga tattoos. Hi Sir Piper. Thank you Jackie by the way for your question. Hi Sir Piper, thanks for your presentation. A lot of Filipinos today choose traditional designs as a way to connect to their heritage. However, as you mentioned, most traditional tattoos have deep cultural significance for particular communities. How can Filipinos who want to use tattoos as a way to display their culture and heritage do so without culturally appropriating traditional designs of indigenous groups? I think you somehow already answered this a, a while ago, sir, but maybe you can repeat again your answer to the question. 
in what I'm planning to do, it's a topic. Yeah. But uh, um, the best I can get is to get the ones that's appropriate to your own uh, lineage. And that, that's how easy it takes time. And that's where the word due diligence, because you take time to you learn family. It's an entire journey because it was sa unang panahon para sa ilahan. It was a journey for them from childhood to correct the experience without. Um, so, uh, for instance, there is a Mindanao. Now, the Nanga Ayong and the mga third generation, the Sayan Mai Bas, there is a Mindanao. And they identify na yung Kayo sa Mindanao. And they want to sila some Lumad communities. Gusto ko sila nga, like, kapo design. Ika na ng Lumad communities that kailang i kwan lugar gida pa na Mindanao. But I encourage them na. Make your due diligence and research in your lineage, and then the discovery nila ang nagsuriya din sa mga lolo, nagsuriya ni nana na ikan din sa sipu, pero ikan gide ito sa mas pati. So you know that connection alone will link them, or ikan pa sila sa bicol, and then we move from there. We we try to find as best as we can to connect you as far back as you can to to that lineage you nimo. The thing we want to do is you know, put Kalinga tattoo to Anan Kalinga, especially head-hunting tattoo. Uh, that's the last thing na Juan, na mabuhat ane nga uh, uh, practice if we want to stay true to the practice of, of our culture. Yeah. Why you kaayo, said sir? No, I mean, sorry, kuyao kaayo if mabutang-butang ka o ka ng tattoo niya, wag kakibaon sa meaning niya, di day tumao ang lahi, day tong meaning, bati day tong meaning, kuyao kaayo na. So they have to really do their uh, due diligence Um, get to know uh, their tattoos and make sure that it's connected to their heritage. So that means they also have to get to know who they are. You know? So that's a. Uh, I hope we were able to answer your question, Jackie. And, uh, yes, sir. If, if I may add, um, uh, I totally love the fact that we are having this conversation, we're having this dialogue. Okay, There's yeah important questions being asked because just as the, the um, audience and in a lecture, you know, same Japan, this is re rediscovering and we're talking about our ancient, ancient practice. And now, wala siya, karun pa nato ni guys, butan. So the enthusiasm there, para sa ko, asad, would, would require time, would require time to settle down. Kay lao, you guys, this is not my practice. Yes. But it is worth it, I think, sir, if they also, it does not matter how long it will take them to get to know. And uh, they will also be able to discover who they are along the way. And I think that is also very important, uh, aside from getting the tattoo no, that uh, really speaks or is very authentic. Okay, uh, let's have a sec, our next question. Do we still have our next question? Can we flash? This comes from Clarissa May Sevilla. Thank you for your question. Here's the question, sir. In Visayan traditional tattooing, is there evidence? If not, is it possible that some tattoo markings or designs were written in surat, which is the uh, pre-colonial uh, writing system in the Visayas, rather than the usual patterns? Pwede ba kuno nga... Or what naaba kuno ibidensya nga nagamit og mga markings nga murag alphabet or or sis writing system can you add to the Visayas? Um, far as I know, or maybe na mga open na mga nagresearch ani would have come across, but more sa mga tinalita na kuanan na mga writing system, it could have been it's a hindi siya naman sa open na description na fire like. So kung tanaw ni mo tong sulat sa Siberia kung anong murag murag siya na yun so we we don't know. Wala wala taka balo kung maubag yun nasa. But for the most part ang mga nakasak o isa't mga illustrations or even mga carvings sa marubula man kayo'y nagamit o ka ng writing system. I guess, mo sa'yo makawonder ko nga, we relied heavily more on these symbols as opposed to like the writing system. So these symbols end up almost like hieroglyphs na nga mo na ang message nila dari. Yeah. Okay, because I think this came about because in our uh, another webinar that we hold here in, in Casa Gordo Museum, we have the CGM talks and we discussed about the surat, which uh, uh, evidence also comes from pottery 
I think there were four evidences that uh, show that there was already a, a system of writing in the Visayas. But uh, as to whether um, we find this in the tattoos as, as designs, that remains to be seen. So that made me requires further research and uh, study. Okay, uh, you're right. Yeah. But it is possible. It is possible. Okay. Maybe uh, Clarissa will be the one to, to research about this now. <laughs> okay. Um, we are going to go into our next trivia question. Again, prepare yourselves. The first one who gives us the correct answer can type the correct answer. will win a prize from Gabi Isa Kabilin. And here's the second trivia question. Okay. Trivia number two, what is the term that refers to a person with no tattoo? Ang tao nga walay tattoo, what unsay gitawag niya? Say tawag ani niya, no? Tawag ani niya gahubo. <laughs> I don't know. Um mini gahubo ta ako di ay Joey kay man koy tattoo. Oh, okay, sorry, the special mention si Joey, who's actually here seated beside me. Thank you, Joey. Okay. So type in your correct quest, uh, answers and we'll uh, tell you who's the winner. We'll see if we can announce them at the end. If not, we'll be posting the winners to our trivia. Let's go to our next question. If there is another question, there is. Okay, this comes from Noel Tigli uh, Sir Piper. Thank you for the question, Noel. Question, mga subuano. Mga subuanon. No, tanang mga bisaya around the world are using the boxer codex as reference to their own patik. What do we know about who drew the illustrations? Who ah, uh, kinsa kono ang naghimo sa boxer codex or kinsa kono yung nagdraw sa mga illustrations sa boxer codex? Uh, ano ba ito? Ano? Ano? But anyway, <laughs> kaning boxer codex, okay, isa ni sa, um, isa ni sa kanang atong i-consider na when looking at the, at the boxer codex, um, Ang iyang ang isa sa mga questions nga na raise ani nga kung sa kahit kung nag nag draw ana ilapay lang sila sa dagat and then nakakita sila o kani patikan kayo then out of a quick sketch maybe ana bitaw um there kana po din ako yung pangan raise up ana so this one hindi mo kung kinsay nagkuan ane so that that part was collected by the Marinias and then eventually kani siya ano siya sa state karon um so yeah, inana ang kuan ang um, it was our first illustration of the Visayas. So para sa ko asa garilay sa buko sa kanang boxer codex na buko kayo ni siya nga na importance ka makita na to what it looks like. But then again, to correlate with with the tattoo itself sa boxer codex, tama po siya description. Tama po siya description nga nasulat sa mga uh, mga Kastina in Kastina na siya description to coincide. And katong i-pang-mention po nila sa document, Kamirror mo tayo sa atong mga isuon kung mga mga Pilipino sa Duzon, dari sa Mindanao. So, para sa kuha, i-apply sa nato ito nga, nga, nga uh, description o kani nga mga information nato. So, kung ngayon sila nga ang bukan was reserved sa mga patay, then for in order for us to revive it, then let, ato ko na siyang ipuhi nga na tradisyon. So, if we were said nga uh, kanyang siil, Moy una ang lapit moy una nga patikan o kinana nga connection and kinahanglan ka mo mo to sa imo ang uh, imo ang tattoo then pwede po nato na siya i-uan i-apply sa imo ang south lugar kung mapasato ka okay uh but again we go back to your uh sharing ganiha uh, sir piper about really not getting that just merely copying the tattoos and getting one you really have to know what they mean and what they mean also to you no as a heritage where are we showing i know of the time i think kayo tama Okay, yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you for that question, Noel. I hope we, uh, sir, answered your question, Sir Piper. Let's, do we still have other questions? While we're waiting for the next question, I'm 
you know, one of the things that I uh, got from your uh, lecture, Sir Piper, is that, you know, uh, the patterns, the designs of uh, our pre-colonial ancestors may be the same, but there is also a sense of uniqueness to them in that uh, there is a belief that tattoos are a proof of your identity when you when uh when a person dies your ancestors uh in the other world will know you because you uh they know that you have these tattoos it's sort of like your id correct sir yeah and you mentioned also the term community based although even if the traditional tattooing is community based it's based on the beliefs the culture of that uh, of that society or that community, you still have a sense of uniqueness in your tattoos. And that is why you mentioned the term community-based individuality. That's very interesting uh, term. Okay. Do we have next uh, the next question? Ah, okay. We're going to trivia again. We li really love our trivias. So let's have, let's go. Ginhawa on sa Caster Piper, kadiot lang. Naatay trivia. This, this is the question, trivia number three. Pass, pass fingers, fast fingers, facial tattoos are reserved only for the bravest of the brave. These tattoos are called what? What do you call facial tattoos? Oh my God, brave na yun ni mabuang na yun tingin tas kasakit aning naasay mong naong no? Kanang tusok tusok hadlok na mga nitag injection. Okay. <laughs> Nakahisgot ng injection kay magpatest or nagpa-test nagpa pata sa for COVID, we have to get tested also. Okay. So, fast fingers. If, if um, we'll wait, if they can, if my teammates here can give me the, the names of the winners later on, we will announce them live also. Okay. That's for trivia number three. Do we still have our, uh, do we still have questions? I think we can still accommodate one or two and then uh, we'll close. Okay, here's another question. Reno Daniel Arias, thank you for your question. Are there tattoos that symbolize the protection from the gods? Hello? Uh, sir, Piper. Nabakunoit tattoos, are there tattoos that symbolize the protection or some sort of like a pro yam yam tinganin a protection from the gods? So, katagara, makun na mga mga traditions ani nasa sila ritual kabuhaton. No? So, kaninga ritual katagara kabuhaton sa mga shaman, sa mga bailan, ano yun ang mga tinatawag. And oftentimes, kani siya, katulad yun ang designated person. The, the practitioner itself is different. Kasi nga siya ay rank sa society. Na siya mo ay uh, pasahan sa kaalam ng upatik na ipasahan ko na itong kaalam ng upatik. So, actually, mga murag napu-yapun na ginahol. No? So, oftentimes, naana diya sa practitioner mag-ikan. Naana mag-ikan nga ilang ipatik. Ano yan, nadala, gihapon na, karun na mag-ipun tayo mga anting-anting ng mga kanadis sa mga mga ano sa'yo, mga sundalo. Na mag-ipun na, karun nga na sila yung mga orasyon ng mga patik. So, that stems from from indigenous past na ito sa una. So as a whole, I guess, mo depende na siya sa tao, sa tribu, inana. And that's, to talk about certain designs would take us another 40 minutes na tayo. Yeah, but you're saying, sir, were there designs? Is it a yes or a no? Yep, na yes. Naa, naa. And you're so also saying, sir, that when one is getting a tattoo in the traditional way, especially long ago in the pre-colonial times, magyam-yam sad na, na ay murag i-, -i Isulti while you're getting a tattoo? Uh, kung, kung i-base na to sa mga existing indigenous cultures, ikan dari sa Mindanao pa yung dito sa Luzon, naana siya. So most mm. likely, naagit niya po na sa Kabisayan, na binagit sa Kabisayan, pero naagit niya po ng yam-yam no, sa kapukiran, na hindi mm. na mawala sa toa. So magyam-yam samtang nagpatato ka. Okay. Uh, so dari sa Mindanao, kasagara, before o after. Yeah, before and after. Wow. Basic part of the yum yum, sir, is actually the pain, no? The protection from pain. That's me. very sorry. Um, wow, I, I, I could not can fathom 
uh, the pain probably one get one gets when you get a tattoo. Okay, do we still? Uh, let's have our last question. Or uh, before we even go to our last question, um, let me also ask Sir Piper or maybe get his comment. You mentioned, Sir, that it's very interesting when you said that the tattoo designs are also designs that you can find in objects. No, like you mentioned about the shards there, the shard that you really liked in in uh, in Museo Yosugbo. So, and you also said that the designs and patterns are reflective of their belief. I was so uh, picked by the in, with interest. Uh, uh, remember um, when you discussed about the different divisions of the world, which is reflected in our uh, how do you call this in our architecture and even in our clothing, and we can find it in the tattoos. No, when we divide our we our bodies where the, the tattoos will be placed it also actually is reflective of uh, the the three divisions the way we see um the world no like uh, the heavens the 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 how do you call that land no or middle kung sa koan pa na sa sa lord of the rings middle ground onya and then the underground no so uh, very interesting it, it it makes me realize how beautiful our culture is ketanan related no, from belief, from tattooing, from even the, 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 the decorations, the designs that we find in our uh, objects, like even in our pots or the things that we use every day. Interconnectivity. I got that. That's very interesting. Let's go to our third. Uh, this trivia. is the fourth, no? Trivia. Fourth trivia. Put down your dining trivia na ron. Daghan makadaog. Trivia number four. Fast fingers, what are the three traditional methods tulog yun, no? Ang tulog is good. Of tattooing in the Philippines. The three traditional methods. We discussed yun to ni Sir Piper at length. So, please, uh, quickly give us the three traditional methods of tattooing. All right. Okay. Do we have our final question? Our last question before we end? And this question comes from Elvin Ian Bacaltos, Elvin, we all like the elves, very Lord of the Rings, no? Um, while the reason for male tattoos, he asks, he's asking, while the reason for male tattoos are very clear, was there a reason for the tattoos on the women's arms, aside from community markings of tradition? Did they have to do an equal display of bravery? Did women do a, kanang, when they get tattooed, Sir Piper, did they that does it mean that they have to also show a display of bravery in order to get one? Um ang isa ta ako na lang siyang generalize sa whole artist matugayan. So in so indigenous culture and mga pre-colonial culture, no? Uh ang isa ta to akaran in general, ang women's role is sila man may manganak, sila may mag-carry sa child. So they ako ko kining story ani the kind of symbolism ani mapuros mo anak ni ana mm. so the women carried life no so may upan nga, nga group pag abot sa farming sila ra ang women lang pwedeng matanom dili pwedeng matanom ang lalaki di mm. pa ira kay ano man kay mo ba man ang mo kasi mo mo carry life kay ba sing mapalpas kuno ang lalaki kay man wa man sila gid chosen gender nga mo mo pipit kinabuhi lugar so in return this is just a small aspect to them to what the abilities of women that differ from men. So with that said, oftentimes, I pangutang sa kamot na that with representation of the ilang pagtanong dito sa uma, sa ilang pagkuhan dito sa umayan. So that's just one of the many kuhan nila. Ang dimension na kay mga healers, no, kanil, na yung mga mananambal, mga, mga, uh, mm. Yeah. Wow. So definitely, no, that's a show of bravery ng uh, childbirth. I wonder if they... Yeah, they, you're not, I, I, no one can actually do that except of the women. But I'm wondering for the singles, sir, unsa ilaha kang mark of bravery? <laughs> Planting. <laughs> anyway, okay. Thank you for all your questions, but uh, we really have to, 
to end our Q&A. And before we say thanks to Sir Piper, let's have our fifth trivia question, our last. And then we will announce, I think we will have an opportunity to announce the winners. Here's our the fifth trivia question. Fast fingers, the oldest known tattoo tool found in the Philippines is from what BC, meaning the date, numbers, numbers lang kay Gisulti naman BC. So the oldest known tattoo tool found in the Philippines is from what BC? Blank BC. Okay? I hope naka, na naka-answer. Ani? Before we we say thank you to Sir Piper, I'd like to uh, share this because this comes from our our fellow Rafinian from Rafi, who actually got his tattoo from you, Sir Piper. I don't know if you remember Leo or Piana. Asa to ihang picture ato juning ishare. Kay mutato man sa ni si Sir Piper, no? And this is the. The tattoo of Leo, niya ni Ingun yud siya, nga uh, three, ma three months back and forth yud siya. Nya, the result is a mark that connects me to my ancestors and is full of personal meaning. It is the bridge that connects me to my past, acknowledges my present, and guides my future. Painful siya, but it dissolves uh, when it's the it when it's full of meaning and you feel you are connecting with your ancestors. So, mo nang iyahang... Uh, Para niya worth it yud ang iya hang tattoo na nakuha and it came it, you're you're the tattoo artist ani sir sir uh, Piper um, before we announce our trivia winners we'd like to thank you uh, sir Piper Abbas he challenged you sa atong connection but uh, he's here until the end um, we are already showing the certificate of appreciation. We'd like to give you the certificate of appreciation, Sir Piper. This comes from the Gabi Isa Kabilin 2020 online activities, and it's given to you, Sir Mr. Piper Tiabas, for sharing your expertise and time. As speaker of the web webinar, we sign tattooing and tattoo designs during the Gabi Isa Kabilin 2020 activity for August. Given this 28th day of uh, August 2020 at Casa Gordo Museum. We'll be sending to you, and this is signed, by the way, by the Rafi President and CEO, Ms. Dominica Bichua. We'll be sending the certificate to you, sir, definitely. But we're showing you all uh, that uh, we're giving you the certificate. Um, and with that, we'd like to thank you, good Sir Piper, for uh, giving us the time. And I know you're giving us, you gave us actually... Uh, Ample time because we had to do a lot of things to ensure that uh, we really get this uh, webinar on air or or on in social media. Thank you, thank you, Kaayo sir, and padayon sa imuhang uh, pag uh, preserve sa ato ang uh, culture, sir, no, through the art of tattooing. Daghang salamat and padayon sa imuhang research also on the tattoos. Daghang salamat sa kayo sa igayon. Thank you, thank you. And happy fiesta, the idea has booked noon, sir. <laughs> okay, um, we have our trivia winners. Trivia number one, our um, winner is Minxi Villaver. Trivia number two, our winner is Ave, Ave Roth Marie Mayol. Trivia number three, winner is James B. Trivia number four, winner, Christian Sicily von Nascher. And uh, our fifth winner for the trivia is Dani Casuelio. Um, no worries. You are going to be contacted by uh, someone from the Gabi Isa Kabilin uh, Organizing Committee for about your prize. Thank you very much for taking part of our uh, of our for our of our JSK online activity this August. And before we leave, I'd like to. I really love that message uh, of of Sir Piper when he ended his lecture about rediscovering uh, that uh, who we are. Actually, the message behind the webinar, I feel, and all the webinars that we are going to be doing and we have done for Gabi Isa Kabilin for that matter, is actually a way for us to uh, know how deep our culture is, how, how uh, full of uh, meaning and, and, and full of of uh, so many things that may surprise you, but may really amaze you. Um, it's something to be proud of. And um, we, before we were 
uh, under the, the Western influence, we really had this beautiful and blooming culture. And I think it's about time we learn and be proud of uh, this culture that we had before the, the before we were colonized. And uh, that's what also the, some of the things that we would like to 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 impart through our Gabi Isa Kabilin webinars. And with that, for this session, we'd like to thank again, Mr. Piper Abbas for sharing his knowledge about uh, tattooing, Visayan tattooing and tattoo designs. We'd like to thank uh, Ms. Masi Cabanes of uh, the curator of um, Museo Subbu for hosting we say Subo is the host of the event, but for Masi for giving us the idea and for reaching out to Sir Piper also. And I'd like to thank um, everyone, uh, the organizing committee uh, for the GSK, especially to the team that uh, ensured that this G uh, webinar will really push through. I'd like to thank Joey, Arlene, Martel, Sig, and Mac. We'd also like to thank our CRM team, Faye and Andy, and our BDG team, and even our IT team who really ensured that our connection really will never lag. We will not lag. We will not be disconnected. And uh, we'd like to remind, we'd like to also thank all our GSK partners. And with that, next month on, in September, we have two GSK online activities already set for you. On September 18, you will have a virtual tour of Fort San Pedro. And on September 26, it's a Saturday, nalahi lang siya because of the availability of our speaker. But on Saturday, September 26, we will have uh, someone from uh, Manila, I think, who will be discussing to us about Fujian ceramics in the time or before the Spanish uh, on the Spanish um, colonization. So that's very interesting. I hope you will be with us in next month for our Gabi Isa Kabilin online activities. Dagang salamat uh, and hope to uh, hope you had a, a, you will have a great afternoon and, and the rest of the day. Thank you and uh, bye bye. Again, thank you so much for sharing your valuable time and for participating in our third webinar. We hope to see you again next month for another engaging activity to appreciate and experience Cebu's culture and heritage. Only here at Gabi Sa Kabilin 2020 Online Activities. Have a nice day.